Welcome to Millionaire Mondays. My name is Adrian Goslett and I'm the CEO of Remax of Southern Africa. You have everything you need to be successful. That's right, you already have everything you need to be successful. Well, that's actually the topic of today's talk. And you're going to hear from a motivational speaker, coach, trainer, and Remax broker owner, Grant Gavin. I hope you enjoy today's session. I hope that you get value out of it. And I look forward to catching you on the next Millionaire Monday. Good morning, everybody at Remax, and welcome to the edge of my dining room. That's where I've been stuck for the last five to six weeks of my life, like pretty much most of you at home. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Grant Gavin. I'm a Remax broker owner from Durban, Remax Panache. And we operate in Durban, North Lucia, and I'm Schlanger. And I'm also a speaker and a coach. And I'm that guy who's been doing the millionaires training for Remax agents around the country over the last two to three weeks. And it's been amazing. We've had seven classes with over 200 agents who have gone through the course. And what I've really enjoyed the most about interacting with agents now from outside of my office is it's reaffirming my belief 100% that everything you need in order to be successful, you already have. I'm going to say that again, because this is going to be the theme of my message today. And if Adrian allows me, I'm going to go into a second or a third one in the weeks to come. But everything you need in order to be successful, you already have. And I can bring that across so many aspects of your business. And what I do in the Millionaire's Training is I start number one with you. Every single human being has limitless potential. I mean, have you ever wondered how you and the agent next to you in your office are doing exactly the same time in this job? Time is in a prison sentence, but you're both earning different incomes. Like, what, what's going on? But every single human being has limitless potential. So what I love doing as a coach is I love sitting down with somebody and trying to work out why do you do what you do when you know what you know? That was a great quote by um, the Canadian uh, real estate coach Richard Robbins. Why do you do what you do when you know what you know? There's something that's holding you back. And the something has something to do with you and the way that you're thinking about your business and the way that you're thinking about the activities that you have to do in your business. Because it's not for a lack of information. It's not for a lack of knowledge. You can get onto the internet. You can Google anything. You can read any book you want to on sales, on negotiation. But you still don't do what you know that you need to do. And this has been very frustrating for me as a coach over the years. How do I make somebody do what they need to do? And the answer is, well, I can't. The answer is 100%. I cannot force anybody to do anything. You cannot control the will of another. But what I can do is I can ask the right questions to get you to start thinking about why or how you are holding yourself back from living a life of fulfilled potential. So that's the number one thing that I want to talk about is... You already have you, the most unique individual human being on the planet, who is going to relate with people in a completely different way. You're going to attract followers in a completely different way to anybody else in your office, yet you are not operating at full potential. So why are you holding yourself back or how are you holding yourself back? The number two thing I look at is I say, well, the other thing that you already have in order to be successful is a network and a sphere of influence. You have people, friends, family, past clients who are all sitting there in the form of an asset of your business that you aren't even using, or you're not using effectively. And what if we just changed our mindset, we changed the way we think about this asset, because we've already got it, it's sitting there in our business, and we're not using it. And of course, the third thing is that you have access to every tool and benefit that you need in Remax as a real estate agent in order to be successful, and you're probably not using that either. So I wanted to go through those three, and I'm not going to get to all three today. So let's start with the mind. Let's start with the most powerful asset that you have. Have you ever sensed a frustration about yourself? Have you ever felt frustrated about the fact that you have goals and you have aspirations and you have dreams? It's like this, it's in the pit of your belly. It's this indomitable spirit that we all have where we know we can do better than we're doing. But we feel this frustrating feeling because this mind of ours kicks in and it's the most powerful thing that we have. It's the most powerful muscle in our body and it kind of squashes down all our thoughts and our negative thinking and our insecurities squash down on our stomach, squash down on the spirit and dampens our spirit every single year when we don't achieve our goals, but we know we can do better. Have you ever felt that feeling of frustration before? I know I have. Um, I'll never forget when I walked into my real estate office for the first time, my, my dad had started the franchise. He phoned me up 
Uh, this was about 2006. He said, boy, you want to buy 50% of the business? And I said, no. <laughs> How, how would I do it? How would I pay you? I was so stuck in employee mindset. I was working for Remax head office at the time. I'd already seen how amazing broker owners were running their businesses. I'd seen how really bad broker owners were running their businesses. I knew everything about Remax, but I still doubted myself. Why? Because I'd never sold a house. So when my dad phoned me, he said, boy, do you want to buy 50% of the business? I was like, no, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And how am I going to pay you? <laughs> and then I said to him, but dad, if you don't sell it to me, who, who are you going to sell it to? And in an instant, he said, I'm phoning your sister. And I was like, no ways, no ways, I'm coming. And in, in an instant, that fear of missing out just like really clicked a, a trigger with me. And I ended up going back to Durban in 2006 as a 28-year-old, full of insecurity, full of a, a lack of confidence, and, and completely fearful of the fact that I would take over this business and it would go the other way under my watch. Why? Because I'd never sold a house. And I believed, I believed that because I'd never sold a house, I couldn't lead a team of real estate agents track 15 years later and I've twice won the broker owner of the year in South Africa award the first time I won it I thought I was lucky I honestly thought I was lucky I didn't know what I had done to win that award I thought well obviously everybody else has had a bad year but it's cool I'll take the award the second time I won it was by design it was as a result of a plan because what had happened over 15 years with me is that I invested in myself on a personal growth level I understood that if I was going to change this insecurity, if I was going to break away from this com constant self-doubt and, and doubting myself, the only thing I can go to work on is myself. And this is the most powerful message I can have for every single one of you today is that your mind and the way you think about everything is affecting and impacting your results. Because the way we think affects the way we feel. And the way we feel affects the actions that we take. And you and I both know that if you want to move forward in life, you have to take action. So if it's something as simple as picking up the phone and making a call, whether you're a broker owner phoning a recruit or an agent phoning a past client, if you feel awkward about making that call, it's because of the way you're thinking about that call. So if we want to change the action, we've got to change the way we feel. And in order to change the way we feel, we have to think about it in a different frame. So this is how the world works, right? Every single one of you is receiving this message from me today through a different filter. Every one of us who's listening to this call sees the world through a different set of eyes. And how our brains work, how our minds work, our minds' primary function is to protect us and to conserve us and to keep us safe. That's why whenever you do something uncomfortable, it's like this elastic band that stretches. And the more you stretch into uncomfortable territory, you feel the strain, you feel the pain, you feel the the sort of awkwardness of what you're about to do. And your first instinct, when you feel the tension of that moment, it just brings you back to the safe place. That's what your mind does, right? So what I try and say to people now is when you feel that stretch, when you feel that you're stretching towards the comfort zone and things are getting uncomfortable, you've got to just keep on stretching because eventually you snap that elastic band and what you realize for the first time is that first and foremost, how you've been thinking about something is not actually reality. But when you break through that comfort zone, there's a whole nother level of magic that's waiting for you. But you've got to break it first, right? So when we're looking at the world, when something happens to us, or every single day of our life, our brain is receiving so much information. It receives so much information, not only on a knowledge perspective, but on a sensory perspective, how we, how we see, feel, touch, smell, taste, and our internal mind, the way we speak to ourselves. We're receiving so much information every day. Because our mind can't take all that information, we filter it down. And what you filter and what I filter is going to be completely different. Have you ever walked out of a training session or a Remax sales rally and you turned to your colleague and said, wow, that was the best speaker I've ever heard. And your colleague goes, no, man, that was cuck. That was, that was so boring. But have you ever heard a song before where a certain lyric in that song just gets you on that day and you get goosebumps over it because it's just reminding you about something in your life and that song becomes your best song ever. And you say to your mate, oh, don't you love that song? And they go, no, it's terrible. It's the worst song ever. Or have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you've reminded them the next day of the conversation and said, no, you didn't say that. We didn't speak about that. I didn't hear it. Or have you ever delivered a message to someone and they've taken it in completely the opposite context of how you meant that message to be delivered and they've gone and done exactly the opposite, right? That's reality. That's human beings. Because when we receive information, the way we filter that information is we delete, we distort, and we generalize. Like if I don't agree with something, if it doesn't make sense to me and I hear, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to listen anymore. I've been in training sessions where the speakers started talking about something that I know I don't believe in and I just switch off. I delete it. I'm not going to do it. 
you've experienced that too, you know? So we delete or we distort it, we put it into our own frame of reference. So I hear something and I put it into context that makes sense to me based on my values and my beliefs. Or I generalize. If you heard a trainer go, oh, you must make more calls, you know, all calls are difficult, all calls give me a horrible feeling, I'm not doing it. We generalize all the time. And we delete, distort and generalize based on our values, our beliefs, our past conditioning and our past experiences. That's the key. That's the power. So if you don't want to do something today, if you're not taking action, you're feeling awkward about it because of the way you think about it. And the way you're thinking about it is quite often due to an experience in the past or some form of conditioning. And every single one of you went through school for 12 years of your life. You've been disciplined to conform. You were taught not to stand out at school. You weren't taught sales. You were given a syllabus. You were given everything you needed to pass so that you could go out and get a job. So, so many of us are trying to operate in sales with the mindset of an employee. And that's impossible. In sales, you cannot sit around and wait to be told what to do. You have to think more like an entrepreneur. And you have it within you. You just have to unlearn a lot of the conditioning of the past. Or maybe you've had past experiences. Maybe you've had a family that has told you money is the root of all evil. Or you cannot be a single woman and have a successful business career. And you've heard it time and time again from your parents and your grandparents. And because those thoughts and those beliefs have been repeated so many times, you now believe those thoughts to be your own. But they all form part of your unconscious mind. And your unconscious mind, whether you're aware of it or not, dictates 97% of your behavior. So we've got to go to work on ourselves. We've got to go and work out how you are holding yourself back. Because right now, you don't even know. But there are certain thinking patterns and there are certain belief patterns that you have in your unconscious mind that you aren't even aware of. They're not your thoughts. They've been placed there through conditioning and past experience. So if we're going to move forward, particularly now in this COVID crisis, we're going to change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is basing future decisions on what's happened to me in the past. In other words, I've never sold a house to somebody who's never viewed it before. Or I broke up with my boyfriend. He was an absolute idiot. He broke my heart. I'm never getting into a relationship again. That's a fixed mindset. Instead of going, well, yes, nobody's bought a house from me in the last few years by not viewing a property, but in the last few years, they weren't stuck at home under lockdown. So maybe now I've got to find a way to make this happen. Or a growth mindset is, yeah, he broke my heart. He was, he was an idiot. <laughs> but maybe I go to work on myself and I start attracting a better quality human being for my next relationship. Let me learn from the past. And that's a growth mindset. A growth mindset is how do I go into the future Understanding that I need to constantly be learning about myself, learning about new, new consumer behaviors, new ways of doing business. Let me not be afraid to try something because if I try something, at least if I take a step forward, I'm moving closer to where I want to be. But not based on anything that's happened to me in the past. I've almost got to find a way to wipe that slate clean, learn from history so that I don't make mistakes in the, in the future. But I've got to be constantly focused on the future, trying to find new ways of doing things. That's a growth mindset. And in order to do this, we have to go to work on ourselves, And we have to put personal development at the number one list of our priorities. I hope this makes sense. I've had so many people contact me after the Millionaire's Training to go, Grant, I finally figured out why I can't make calls. I finally figured out why I've always been so fearful. And you know what? It's something in my past. But I've, I've realized it now. So now when you realize it, you just start thinking about it slightly differently. You reframe those thoughts in your mind to make better decisions for the future. That's a growth mindset. So today, what I'd ask every single Remax agent to do, every day that you get out of bed this week, I want you to start your day by saying, everything I need in order to be successful, I already have. Say it every single day when you get out of bed. Start training your mind. Everything I need in order to be successful, I already have. And then go to work on yourself and start realize how or where you are holding yourself back from taking the action steps that you need to take in order to be successful. Have an amazing week, everyone. And uh, if Adrian's happy, I'll chat to you next week.